From eating to excitement and veils. Hello, Magic here, and welcome back to another episode of Interesting Toe Facts, the series where I talk about facts from Toe that I find either fun, unusual, or simply interesting. So, without further ado, let's begin the Interesting Toe Facts number 60. Number 5. So, in the last episode, I talked about Shikaizen and the process you need to do to become one. So, it kind of hurt to discuss a little more about it. So as mentioned in the last episode, Futo is a Shikaizen, the lowest form of an immortal being. So Futo did the whole ritual deal, abandoning her body and transferring her soul into an object. For Futo, that said object was a plate, which is why you probably see it quite often in the games. Since she's a Shikaizen, she's able to take on a great number of forms. Although Futo's more of an OG gal and went with the traditional look she had when she was alive, as opposed to Miko's decision to go with a more modern form. Hmm, Miko looking modern, I honestly can't tell if it's supposed to be a modern looking or not. I'm not really an expert when it comes to clothing. Anyway, in her official profile, Zun lists Futo as a Taoist self-identifying as a Shikaizen, but it can be inferred from her backstory as well as her article in Symposium that she is a bona fide Shikaizen. I mean, you did the whole process, so I'm assuming you're a Shikaizen. Number 4. For those who don't remember, Marizo first popped into the series in 10 Desires. The reason she came was because Nue, at the time, was worried about the yokais after learning the saint, Miko, was revived. So Marizo was brought in as the big guns against Miko, not realizing that Reimu, Murisa, Sanae, or Yomu had already defeated her. Although Mamiso was meant to be the trump card against Miko, she's pretty chill with the humans and is often taking on a human form when visiting the village, as shown quite often in Forbidden Scrollery. According to the Omic text, it stated, Sometimes she tricked them, but she'd also lend money to the poor and worked diligently on any task she was given, so she integrated well into human society. So she is also a good person in the part that she can be called on for help and expressly cross the sea from saddle. For being a yokai, she sounds like a pretty cool bro, minus the tricking part, but you can't win them all. Though she is seen in the human village often in human form, Symposium has stated that she does not make an effort to hide her tail, considering it's a mark of her high status. Although I find that part a little weird to be honest, considering she's been shown in the village many times and forbidden, and not once did anyone freak out because of her tail. If they saw the tail, people would be flipping this shit faster than Yuyuko could eat. And trust me, you don't want to see that. Number 3 I want to show you a picture. When you see it, what do you think of? Something epic slash amazing is being shown? Then you'll probably be correct. If you're not familiar, this is a meme that many series have used and Toho ain't the only one that used it. The original picture which you're seeing is based off four guys at Nintendo's E3 conference in 2003 and 2004. The first time was like, meh, but the second time they visited, holy hell did they lose their shit. To be fair, a new Zelda title was announced, so I'll give them that. Now would you believe me if I told you the meme was actually canon in Toho? At this point you're probably like, nah man John, you're just bullshitting here. But no, it's the truth. Now if you played Hopeless, you know every character has their own unique gauges. Raymond with the yin yang orbs, Marissa with the stars, and so on. From the looks of it, Miko utilizes the excitement of the four dudes in Hopeless. Hell, they even react during the battle as well. Looks like these four dudes transcended reality and arrived in Gensokyo. As a gauge. Still better than nothing. Number 2 Remember back in episode 55 and how I talked about Yoshiko was the only character who's healed herself in the series? Well, her ability is the reason why she's able to do so. Now Yoshiko's ability, which I glossed over in my top 10 video game crossover Toho pictures, mentioned that Yoshiko's able to eat anything as literally stated. When she's hurt, she can suck in the surrounding divine spirits and eat them to increase her HP back to full, thus furnishing her with an ability to recover her HP. If this is ignored, then it wouldn't be possible to defeat her spell cards as time would run out. This could be why Kokuso was able to defeat Yoshika. It's kinda hard to beat an opponent when they keep on healing. Zhongxi seek out lifeblood and walk around aimlessly and also has the characteristics of turning opponents into Zhongxi upon bite. Now if turning others into a Zhongxi ain't a zombie like feature, then I don't know what is. Yoshika has a proactive attitude about increasing her companions. 
Translation, get the fuck away from her unless you want to become a zombie as well. This behavior may be due to a command or it may be an instinctual behavior of a Jiangxi. Regardless of the fact, I'd rather be far away from her if possible. Number one. I want to talk about Celestials. Wait, let me rephrase that. I want to talk about their items specifically and not the being themselves. Sorry Tenshi and Eek, I'm going to have to skip you two for now. Celestials are known to be granted veils by the Lord of Heaven and according to a legend, a celestial maiden whose veil is stolen must remain on earth and marry the thief. I know it's a legend and shit, but couldn't the celestial, an immortal, I don't know, take their shit back? I mean, they've lived in heaven. Good chances are they've eaten those heavenly peaches, and we all know how broken those peaches are. In recent times, some have started losing their veils on purpose and waiting for a man to pick it up, staying with him if he's attractive and taking it back if he isn't. Wow. That sounds... Mm, ratchet, if I'm using the term correctly? This has caused humans to become wary, and nowadays, someone who finds a veil is more likely to sell it to a collector. Now that's all dandy, but the most interesting thing about it is it's noted from Aaron. Aaron says that celestial veils are made from antimatter. Holy fuck. I've heard of it, but I never looked too deep into it. I'm only going to be giving you guys a brief description of what it is, given that it seems rather complicated, and I'm sure there are other YouTube channels that can explain it much better than I ever can. In particle physics, antimatter is a material composed of antiparticles, which have the same mass as particles of ordinary matter, but opposite charges, as well as other particle properties such as lepton and baryon numbers. Let's just say I was not expecting something like antimatter to be mentioned in Toho. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. Which facts were your favorite? Were you amazed at how a meme became a game mechanic in Toho? Are you ever going to try to be near Yoshika? Or were you shocked that the celestial veils were made from antimatter? Like always, if you guys enjoyed this episode, please give it a like and subscribe. Or else Yoshika might try to bite me. And I'd rather not be the trigger of an apocalypse if I can help it. Either way, this is Matcha and thanks again for watching.